Hi there. Um, welcome to uh, this little video that we wanted to post because uh, as we were trying to get testimonials from our volunteers and our community about, um, you know, how they came to practice meditation and what it's done for them, um, we decided that we just we decided that we would have an impromptu conversation with some of our volunteers and, and meditators um, as a way to um, share with everyone and maybe inspire others who um, aren't yet meditating or, and, um, and also talk about our fundraiser. So um, this, is, uh, I hope, this is our first time. So I hope that this will um, be uh, valuable and inspiring. And um, we're gonna start with our first question. And um, our first question is, um, how did you first come to practice meditation? And so we're gonna take turns answering and um, you guys um, feel free to ask questions and uh, if you want me to elaborate on anything, um, I'd be happy to do so. So I'll start, okay? So um, I'm gonna share something really personal. And um, so, Six years ago, I was um, hospitalized for trying to end my life. Um, I've been suffering from depression, anxiety, and suicidal ideations since I was a teenager. Um, and it's, um, it was just really not a great situation. I got to the point where I really hit rock bottom and um, it was really, really scary. I remember when I was in the hospital, the doctor says to me, well, do you want to get better? And I said, absolutely, I do. Um, and they said, I needed three things. Um, they need to, I needed to be on medication. I needed therapy and I needed to meditate. And I thought to myself, huh, this doctor is telling me that I need meditation. And I had no idea what that even means. I didn't, I didn't know anything about meditation at the time. And um, I just had to go on YouTube and try to learn by myself. And after a year of meditation, I really started feeling very calm. And I ended up um, weaning off my medication. And I also stopped seeing my therapist because I was feeling so wonderful and so happy. And, um, and, but I was doing it on my own, completely unguided. I really didn't know what I was doing. I didn't really understand the true, the true purpose of meditation, the, the real intention. And um, it wasn't until I met Bhante uh, last year that um, I, understand, I understood that the value of having a teacher, a teacher to guide you through this process and really, um, uh, and, and really be a stand for the practice. And I found it to, so impactful for me. Um, uh, you know, I felt like meditation has really made me grow, but having a teacher and having Bhante's teach, like the way that he um, says, you know, I've been studying Buddhism before I met Bhante, but it wasn't until after my meditation retreat that I really understood the Dhamma and, and all the words. Like it, it just, now all of a sudden everything just comes to life. It's, it's amazing, like I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> So that's that's basically how I came to came, how I came to start meditating. And over the years, I, I I tried lots of different techniques, but I didn't understand how they kind of fit into one's life and 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 what the benefits were. I just kind of did them, and. And it wasn't until, like again, this this uh, the the uh, vipassana meditation, this insight meditation, is just so. Um, I feel like it's the ultimate. It's the one that um, I didn't know anything about, and so it was. I'm just so, so grateful that I have Bhante, and of course, having all of you guys as uh, supporting there when I go into the the uh, the. the the Dhamma study group, um, you know, I'm doing that now. And I find uh, just listening to all these stories, it's really coming to life now. And so I encourage everyone to really, if you haven't done an intensive course or um, a retreat like this, it's completely to me um, a, a whole nother level that I didn't even know existed. So that's my share. Do you guys have any questions? How did you uh, start meditating? Did you watch Fonte's videos on how to meditate? No, so I started by just watching some rando, <laughs> some random person on the, on the internet because I didn't know anything about Bhante. And so what happened was um, 
uh, when I was looking, when I went to Vietnam a year ago to back to my home country for the first time since I was four, when I left when I was four and I met all my family and I, and I was really diving really deep into my own spiritual path and starting to learn more about Buddhism. So I really only started Buddhism last year. And um, when I went to Vietnam, I said, I wanted to go see all the Buddhist temples and stuff. So I was really inspired at the time when I went to see these amazing, huge statues of Buddhas. And, and I was like, ah, I think, I think one day I might want to become a monk. Like I, it had, I had that in my, in my head that uh, that's kind of like, uh, I, I, I thought about that. And so when I came back to Canada, um, this is just last year, in January last year, I, I was looking for a temple so I could join, you know, um, you know, uh, be part of a following of some sort. And I saw Bunte's uh, website, and I thought to myself, this, this can't be real. <laughs> And I went to a different one with like a big temple and all these stupas and, 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 you know, pagodas. And I went there, but they all spoke Chinese. So I didn't know what they were even saying. I had a person there who was an interpreter. And so she would interpret the message and, and the stories and the, and the Dhamma for me. And I would have lunch there with them and then I would go home. And then um, in over the summertime, over the summer, I was, I have a big garden and I was gardening, I was harvesting some vegetables and I had so many vegetables and I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder how those followers at the temple are doing. I wish I could go and get this basket of food. And literally the next day, like I haven't seen anybody because of the pandemic, the next day, the interpreter for that temple calls me and says, hey, there is a monk lives, close to you that um, uh, that might need some help. And I was like, what? And she sent me Bunte's video. And I was like, wait, I, I remember seeing him like researching and, but I kind of overlooked him. And so I said, well, I'd love to offer some food. So I went to offer him some food. I met with Bunte and I didn't really know, again, I'm like, I have no idea, no idea what the protocol was and, and what, you know, what kind of rituals or do I bow to him? Do I, do I walk away? You know, I didn't know anything. And I was, and I was in the temple that I was going to was um, Mahayana. And, the, um, and I know Bhante teaches Theravada. And so I didn't understand the difference. And I thought, well, I don't know if I wanted to study Theravada for whatever reason. And when, uh, so I decided to volunteer, at the end of the day, I decided to volunteer to give food dana to Bhante. And, um, and uh, it started with two days a week and then it started to do three days a week. And one time I went down to one day and I felt there was such a missing in my life. Like I needed to, uh, I, I, I had this like, uh, I got something out of giving for him and I understood that. And um, from a, on, in a deep level without even understanding the Dhamma or merit or karma, I didn't understand any of that. Um, I just knew that for me, it was something pure and good and and um so that's how I got to know Bunte and now I, I I pretty much for him you know five days a week and offer food dana for him and um I listen to all the dhamma talks every single day <laughs> and um yeah it's it's completely changed my life yeah it's worth mentioning that uh, Jeff is in Canada actually staying right next to our center I'm so close in he's Niagara really Falls. Eight yeah, it's close. I was, I looked him up. I was like, he's eight minutes away. Of course I would go. If he needs anything, I will go. I'm, I'm so close. So um, I'm pretty much taking care of the center now. And, and I go there. And, and so I just finished my 12 day retreat there. And that was all by myself because of the pandemic, there was no other meditators. So it was quite unique experience. I'm sure to not only go to a meditation center for a retreat, but also be by yourself. <laughs> yeah quite intense actually it was perfect yeah i um i don't want uh, you know to keep um, the focus on mm -hmm. you just but uh, yes. i did want to ask you about the depression and the suicidal ideation like sure. uh, how successful were the you know the first attempts with the with your your kind of meditation whatever mm. you, you uh, could do 
and how different it is um, with vipassana. Absolutely. Is, is there I any difference? Such a difference, uh, such a difference. Vipassana, I really understand that it's wisdom that you gain. You don't gain wisdom from doing a, a lot of loving kindness, compassion, meditation, which I did a lot of because I had such so much anger and hate in my heart. Yeah. I needed, you know, and ang just angry, angry and, and, and just hate and just full of hate and, 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 and vengeful you know and and so I did that loving compassion and that helped that and that helped eradicate that but it didn't um give me wisdom and so the vipassana really I I like I said after really going through this retreat now listening to all the talks again it makes it's 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 like finally seeing color you know, like I was colorblind the whole time. And I think I finally see color. Imagine you're colorblind, you see color for the first time. How amazing that is, right? It's like something you've never seen before. That's, but yet you you know of it, you know, you know the shapes, you know that there's different different gradients, but you don't know what the colors are. That's what it's like. Um, so I hope that answers your question. <laughs> but, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. Speaking of questions, I would love to hear about you, Edit. Um, how did you first come to meditate? Yeah, at, at the age of 15, I was diagnosed with a very rare illness um, called limb griddle muscular dystrophy, which um, in time makes um, the muscles atrophy and so the mobility reduces over time. Um, with this particular um, type of muscular disease, uh, it starts with uh, not being able to climb stairs uh, or run, but you're still very able. Um, but it, it's, it gradually go, uh, goes into the arms, like I can't lift, uh, lift my arms uh, higher. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, I use now a um, um, walker. I even wanted to show the, how I do walking meditation with the walker um, because I, I heard so many people complain and I'm like, hmm, hold your up. <laughs> like, <laughs> you can do this. <laughs> and right. um, yeah, basically, basically what, what, it, what it was, it was a huge it, it was causing me a lot of um, suffering not just losing the ability uh, to uh, do stuff to to walk to to be independent and so on um, but basically I was terrified of my future like the future I, I was worried constantly about how mm -hmm. it's going to be what like I could see basically almost 25 years passed from, from my 15 years old <laughs> age and mm -hmm. uh, still no cure or anything. And the future looked really terrifying, um, you know, starting with, with, oh, I'm going to end up alone. And uh, so, yeah, I was suffering a lot. Um, and um, was also sort of um, trying to find an alternative way to be cure cured, right? And then uh, I got into this uh, practice, which is called um, Prananadi here in Romania. And uh, what it does is it's uh, some type of Tibetan something, but I don't think it's authentical. Uh, but what they sold me is uh, I'm, I can be cured if I do this. You know, I do like some type of Reiki, <clears throat> like you put your hand yeah. in certain parts of your body and, and I don't know, channel energy into the body and it's going to be cured or something. And then meditation mm -hmm. as well, like I did um, visualizing symbols, 
uh, and colors mm. and a mantra as well. So I was familiar with this. Uh, but after like two years, I, I, one or two years, I already got very suspicious. Like, what is this? <laughs> it's, not, it's not doing anything. Mm. And uh, when, when the teacher one time, like after, I think uh, the third year, he, he told me like, oh, you're not doing this. And probably that's why it's not working. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I was spending two two hours three hours with this you know um every day like i'm i'm really i'm i'm very uh, persistent person very um yeah i don't know the word so um determined you were determined yeah after a while I, yeah i'm i'm a determined person yeah and um, I got you know fed up with this and and sort of just left the whole thing and um, and then uh, I I, st I watched uh, YouTube videos right I, I was still interested in uh, Buddhism pretty much but I also encountered first the um, Mahayana I think um and then um i don't want to create a huge story but i i, I did saw bantes videos uh, very early on in in just 2013 already and i was in such a disagreement with him and arguing <laughs> in my mind when, when, because it was so shocking to me what he was uh, telling or you know saying about for example part life partners and so on and um but still i i was i deep down i knew that he's right like he's he's telling the truth and mm. um and then uh only in 2016 uh three years early um later i uh, i heard him mention in a video that uh, is teaching meditation online and I'm like what <laughs> and instantaneously I, I scheduled myself and uh, I think the next day the very next day we had our first like you know who I am I mean just introductory uh, meeting mm -hmm. and um, and from then on I, I was hooked um, like I, I couldn't imagine that I will travel at all. Like I, I just wanted to do the at home thing. Like that's that's going to be enough. In some way, I could I could not tell what I've got myself into. Right? No one could. <laughs> You're right. And uh, and then and, uh, when when i was really, uh when i was done with the online course uh he 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 just dropped the bomb you know if you want to come to canada you're welcome and we will arrange everything for you we have a spare room here you don't have to use the stairs and we will help you and i'm like you know thousands of questions in my mind like how could i travel so far like a like you know, I couldn't even leave my house properly alone. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't have a passport, for example. So, but, but everything got so aligned, like everything come, came together so fast. And, uh, and I just, I just uh, applied for, for a passport and then I think the next, as soon as the passport was uh, ready, I could I could purchase a ticket and mm -hmm. so on. So it was very helpful uh, that he told me that um, there is a disabled assistance in the airport, <laughs> so that uh, I could yeah. It, it was that was the first time actually on the airport uh, towards Canada. Yeah, that I used the first time a wheelchair and I never knew how um, 
you know, liberating it is because it could uh, take me wherever I wanted uh, <laughs> and I could I could go there alone basically with the wheelchair. And uh, yeah, so. That's fantastic. It's very, Amazing. very short. <laughs> And then uh, uh, I spent one month in the in the beginning, and then I went back and spent three months there, and I'm still going strong with the practice. It's amazing. Something? Yeah, sure, please. Um, how do you? What would you? How would you say that? Uh, the practice has affected or changed um, your suffering from your obvious problems, problem in life, or whatever you call it. But uh, your 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 suffering. How would you how would you say that the practice has affected that, changed it, or yeah, yeah changed it? Yeah. So many things were you know i left out many things <laughs> from this but uh basically yeah i you know i i still went the first time my, my first time going to canada it was like there was an underlying you know thought that oh maybe i got i will be cured there you know i i still wanted to be uh you know mm. find a, a cure for the body you yeah. know and um, what I I found I found something else actually a cure for the mind, which is possible. And uh, it was it was it all altered my understanding of the body and and health, and it gave me um, huge I mean a tool set. To deal with anything that comes um, right and and basically not worry about the future I no one knows my future right and um, don't worry about the past as well and um, is essential what is what is going to stick with quote unquote me uh, you know to the next life and uh, not not to cling to this body not to cling to the mm -hmm. um, to health in general to whatever and uh, it made life so much I mean so peaceful my life is is so peaceful and uh, just I think even happy. Thank you, Austin, for for in Austin. Uh, yeah, I I was curious if Austin wants to share. Yes, Austin, what do you have to share? Oh, share my story. <clears throat> uh, what got me into meditation was a uh, kind of a mix of what. Uh, um, you know, Jeff and Edith have been talking about, which is basically a search for solution to problems, which are problems could be controllable or not controllable. And there are some problems that you can't do anything about. And, the, you know, some problems you can, but generally a search for wisdom, I guess, uh, that could encompass, uh, you know, a solution, um, uh, for both these kind of problems. And um, I remember I used to, uh, you know, think about, well, putting myself in other people's places uh, and uh, thinking, well, if my life was like this person's life, uh, would I be as happy as I am right now? Um, and I knew intuitively the answer should be yes, because it should not matter. Like let's just you know um like i used to think well what if what if i you know if i don't have hands for example would i be as happy as the guy who does not have hands or is my is, you know in theory i was convinced that 
it should make no difference and i should be as happy as the person who does not have hands yeah. but i knew yeah. that that is not true uh, because if someone says well then you know cut off your hands and <laughs> give it i would not be okay with that and so i knew that that, that there is a problem in the sense that mm. uh, i was not happy uh, with my theoretical uh, thing which was i should be absolutely it, it should make no difference but obviously it makes a difference i mean i'm not going to be happy and so that did not you know fit in uh, and it was obvious to me just looking around that you know anything can happen so then then the reverse question is that well the kind of happiness that i have is 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 kind of a fool's happiness because you know anything can happen you can meet with an accident and then what do you do so you you kind of foolish to be happy with something that uh, you can't really depend on um and the other the other question also was that well let's say you are let's say someone reaches a stage where they say well it it i can be happy with uh, you know let's say in my example no hands or whatever uh then why do you need it like why do you need uh, whatever you're chasing to be happy so mm-hmm. both of, both of those things didn't make any sense i mean the point is that I, you know i couldn't square it off and so it was uh, yeah look, i i uh, kept looking at different sources of wisdom philosophies and you know like like most people search for wisdom i guess i'm one of those uh, like like everybody else i guess you know searching for answers uh you find the whole spectrum right you find a spectrum that doesn't make any sense and it's obviously not making any sense there's part of the spectrum that says well it makes some sense and in some situations this solution kind of works but if the problem is a little deeper and little you know if you dive in a little deeper water then this teaching of swimming will not help you to swim uh, in this kind of a problem uh so and it went on and on till um and i said well maybe you know that's it uh, you then the answer is you don't be happy and that's it that's how it is you know you deal with your situation in life and best of luck or you you be with less happiness than you know the guy who has the hands or whatever so i mean you can't have it all i guess uh but uh, intuitively i knew that there's also that i mean it, it didn't really make uh in the sense i should be i mean I, it should not really matter um so anyway my my point is that that search led me to looking at wisdom from different sources uh and i ended up at some point watching a lot of uh videos from buddhist monks because it turned out that from all the sources uh the one set of people that were talking the most sense according to from whatever i could see who happened to be a lot of buddhist monks mm. and so i i happened to see a lot of videos of different monks and they made a lot of sense and i said yeah that you know that goes great that goes far but it's not um it it doesn't still go all the way to make sense of like one question i had asked when in a in a discussion uh, where you uh, fix general was if if i if one uh, were to take away everything that was dear to you would you be able to be happy in the sense that if i took away you know if you met with an accident and you lost limb and just to make matters worse at that same time your family died and you lost your home and your job and um mm. your money uh, basically and you got you know uh, a disease or something like that uh would you be able to be happy and uh, you know people said well then i wouldn't wouldn't be able to be happy so it didn't go all the way basically all the wisdom that i saw from different people um and my search ended with uh, uh with the solution that i thought did go all the way when i heard uh bante's videos i i stumbled upon bante yudhamo's videos and i said uh you know this person is cutting it all the way to the bone i mean basically he is going uh right at the problem and mm-hmm. you know not trying to solve the problem by this way or that way but he is really going to the heart of the issue and he's in a sense answering all my questions uh you know uh, his theory holds good for <laughs> for answering my questions that 
you can be theoretically, you, I mean, not theoretically, you could be actually happy, even if you, uh, you know, in all my previous scenarios that I've already explained, you could be happy. Uh, so, so that for me was like, okay, I've got the, the, the end of, of the search or whatever in theory and, and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, if uh, uh, anyone knows anything about theory and practice, uh, it's, um, you know, you can read like all the books of theory uh, that, that they are in swimming, but if I throw you in the pool, uh, you'll sink very fast. Uh, so the practice part of that was the actual meditation that uh, Bhante teaches, uh, which I did not like at all because it made very little sense to me. Uh, uh, because my understanding of practice was very different. Uh, my theory mm -hmm. was like the wisdom makes total sense. Whatever he's saying is making total sense. And, uh, you know, I want all that wisdom. And as long as I hear it and I inter internalize it, um, that's it. You know, maybe I forget it sometimes or the other. But if I get the wisdom that, you know, I have the wisdom, right? I mean, I, that's it. But uh, that's like reading all the theory books of swimming and then going to swim and then realizing, hey, why? hang on a second, why am I drowning? I know everything about swimming, why am I drowning, right? Um, so that's when I made that switch to meditation and picked up meditation seriously uh, for the simple reason that I was convinced that this theory holds good and the practice is uh, going to uh, make you better and better at swimming in different currents that, that the world or, you know, mm. that, that you're going to be thrown in. Uh, so that's when I started uh, meditation. It's helped me a lot. Uh, I would recommend it highly to everyone. And um, yeah, but it's a, it's a long journey. I mean, it's like anyone would say, you know, like, you know, you keep swimming and swimming. Uh, I'm just a beginner and hopefully you get better and better. Yeah, so, so, so your point is that just understand what, what I'm hearing is that you were searching for knowledge and like you said, wisdom, but what you came to see was that it was it was not the end all. The end all had to had to end with your meditation practice, right? Because you'd have to you had to use all these things. You had to actually practice acceptance to be able to accept. You had to actually practice peace to have peace and to have that happiness. Mm -hmm. um, because I think you were saying like just having all this knowledge and wisdom wasn't it, it wasn't satisfying. It wasn't enough, right? Yeah, I didn't have the wisdom. I mean, the point is that uh, uh, at the end, I realized that you know all that is is not wisdom at all. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, just hearing, um, answers by, uh, Bande Yududamu was like, this is on, uh, this is, this is cutting it on a different level. And then, um, when, when I practice myself, I mean, then the, the, the whole idea of what, what wisdom is completely changes. Uh, mm -hmm. so I yeah. guess the point is that I, I always realized that I did not have that wisdom and maybe that it did not even exist. I mean, the point is that there is no such solution to every problem, mm -hmm. uh, but um, there is, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I could say that now, I guess. That's but putting wonderful. it into practice is a whole different ball game. I mean, the, it's one thing to say it. It's one thing to say it. Well, it's all in the practice at the end of the day, but um, uh, that, that, that's where the magic happens, I think. Well, Mila, I want to hear from you. I want to hear your story. How did you come to first practice meditation? Well, that's uh, it's interesting what Austin is saying uh, about practicing, like practice versus uh, theory. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it was all practice and pretty much no theory right from the get go. Um, so I was me just. Me too. Me sure. too. And I think there is a huge difference if you fall into practice rather than falling into theory first. So if you start practicing right away, how I, the way I did, um, I didn't have to doubt anything. I didn't know mm. anything about Buddhism, so I didn't have any knowledge. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Yeah, same here. <laughs> 
So I also didn't know what I was getting into. Uh, I started with an intensive course right away and I didn't wow. plan to take a course. I didn't read about it, didn't learn much about it. I just, I was really not doing well in my life. I was living in Canada at the time and um, it just felt like it's, everything is getting worse. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm doing my best, um, but I was headed in the wrong direction. Everything I was doing that I thought was bringing me um, closer to happiness and uh, peace was actually taking me in the opposite direction. Um, I was um, avoiding how I felt on a daily basis, uh, doing things that we all, well, many people do. I was drinking alcohol and um, just trying to mentally um, take myself away from how I felt. And instead of confronting my problems, I was trying to- Well, it's to escapism, right? Using it to escape. Mm-hmm. I started about five years ago um, and I wasn't sure what was wrong. So I, I started reading help, self-help books. And one of the books that I was reading uh, mentioned meditation. The author mentioned meditation, but it, he wasn't too keen on it. He wasn't praising it. He was actually quite negative about it in saying that do what I say instead of meditation. Meditation <laughs> takes forever. And I'm actually grateful that this is this is what the, his take was because that I think that encouraged me to uh, learn more about meditation. And I just simply Googled meditation Hamilton and uh, Sir Mangalo popped up and Bante's channel, YouTube channel popped up. And I started watching his videos on how to meditate and started doing uh, 20 minutes a day. I did, um, I just, just jumped in and started doing it. Um, but I was also curious because the center, and this is interesting to me, was 20 minutes away from my house. It was, I could walk to the center. I didn't have a car, um, so it was really easy to just go there and check it out. And um, I was hesitant. I didn't want to go. It was on my mind, at the back of my mind. And one day I just decided, if I don't go, I, I will never go. I need to go now or forget about it. So I put my shoes on, just walked out and went. Um, and I didn't know what to expect. It said that there's a group meditation uh, at seven o'clock. I showed up at seven o'clock and uh, Bonte opened the door and the house was empty and um, there was no group meditation. <laughs> I don't know if it's still on the website. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, and so that's how I met Bonte and he invited me uh, in and we, uh, and, well, I talked. Um, <laughs> and I, he gave me a booklet on how to meditate and I uh, stayed there and I meditated and he said you can come to the center and meditate uh, he didn't say anything about the course uh, so I just stayed for 20 minutes uh, and I did some sitting meditation and it was just like a novel experience to me even though I lived in Cambodia for seven years uh, surrounded by, <laughs> by monks everywhere um, <laughs> I never actually mm, had a conversation with um, a monk before and it was very um, powerful uh, in a way even though Bante wasn't saying pretty much anything but just that was had a really uh, a strong effect on me and um, so I went home that day and um, I uh, kept searching and I was reading the booklet and uh, I came across all the presets and I realized that um, I'm not keeping well I was trying to but I wasn't um, completely uh, on the path yet I wasn't keeping all of the presets yet and I had questions um, so um, I, I think at some point, and this is why I'm doing this, um, one of the reasons I think that this is important is because a testimonial like this uh, had me 
inspired to um, take a course. Uh, so mm. it was Anna, Anna's testimonial. I don't know, Anna, shout out, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Bonte yeah, was asking her questions. <laughs> And it was just a simple, um, I don't know, 15 minute video, but she talked about the course and all the benefits and how it changed her life. Um, this is how I found out about the course. And this is um, when I decided that I need to learn, learn about this and need to find out more. And I signed up for, a, for an at-home meditation course, not knowing what it was. I just thought I need to talk to Bonte one more time. Um, he probably didn't know. I expected him to show up on the day. I signed up in the morning. I expected him to be there in the afternoon. Um, he wasn't uh, there. So I actually kept calling. I think about on the 14th call, he picked up. <laughs> what, what, was, what was his uh, first word? <laughs> he was, he was um, in a car going to the states. I think. Uh, he, he, no, he was. Um, he just said hello. He didn't really. Um, I just jumped in with my questions. And it was probably harassment, I would say. <laughs> um, mm. I had a few questions. I had a question about drinking alcohol because to me, drink not drinking alcohol was just unthinkable. How could you not? This is unimaginable. And he had a really good point. He asked me, um, is someone pouring it down your throat? That was a really good point. I love that. And I said, uh, no. You know what? <laughs> no, I'm just pouring it down my throat. So that is um, awesome. <laughs> so this is how I stopped wow. um, pretty much drinking. Um, not, but I. It was important to keep the five precepts, and I knew that it's important to follow everything that uh, the booklet says. And at that point, I was already uh, enjoy. I was enjoying. Um, my 20 minutes a day and my husband was saying that I'm less angry. Um, uh, so that was good. Uh, so I was thinking, oh, I like meditating. Um, and there's this course and I asked Bonte about it. And it just so happened that he was, he had a little bit of time left in the country uh, just before. So he had about two weeks and he was going on, um, on a trip to Asia and I was leaving Canada for good. So I had this little window of two weeks before I left the country and before Bonte left the country. And he said, yes, come, um, you can take the course. We have room. Um, and this is another reason why we need a, a meditation center. Um, it changed my life completely. I took the course and um, I, if the center wasn't there, I don't know where I would be. I'd mm. be very, very unhappy. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah. This is Thank you how, for sharing. And I, jumped in. I didn't know what I was signing up for. I thought I like med meditating, makes me feel peaceful. Um, I didn't know what I was signing up for, and uh, it was by far the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. <laughs> but beneficial, um, would definitely recommend it. Uh, not easy, but I would say necessary. Essential. Yes, absolutely. Essential. The, only path, the, the only path to true peace and happiness, am I right? <clears throat> yeah and and so and and I think I think what we all share in common is that we had an amazing teacher and so the uh -huh. whole point of this right the whole point of this um fundraiser is to keep this keep the teachings alive keep him spreading the dhamma keep him helping others this 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 project is so important because again it's for the whole world 
It's for everybody to come and experience for themselves what real lasting peace is like. And so on that note, I wanted to thank everyone for coming in to this morning and sharing their personal stories. Um, and if you haven't already donated, please donate generously at our GoFundMe page. The link is uh, in this in the description below. And uh, we also have it on our Facebook as well. There's a, you can also donate on Facebook if you'd like. Um, and if you have any questions, you can feel free to uh, ask questions on our website. Uh, thank you guys. And I will hopefully let's do this again, but let's get some other people involved and um, yeah. I'll, I'll reach out to everybody and, and make an announcement say whoever wants to join this, uh, this kind of talk will ask them a new question next week. And I hope people um, were inspired and were and got some sort of benefit from this so thank you for joining me today thank you Sadu. Thanks, guys. Sadu. Sadu. thank you so much <laughs>